Greetings and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ed. Managing a coral reef tank is a pursuit that for many of us holds a multitude of varying rewards. For instance, we have the privilege of watching these magic rocks grow, change color, and proliferate. But at the same time, there's another side of this hobby. Sometimes we meet with the disappointment of failure. And that failure a lot of times comes in the form of the deterioration and subsequent death of our treasured pets. Well, that has been my experience for the past two weeks or so. During that time, I've seen both the slow and the rapid tissue necrosis of several of my acropora. Most painful to me of all of this loss has been the loss of my oldest acropora colony, my blue millipora. I've grown this colony for the past two and a half years at least from a tiny brown twig that I picked up at a frag swap at that fish place in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Ever, ever since I moved my 75 gallon tank from my living room to the kitchen, requiring me to nearly empty the tank just to get it moved of water, the, the colony has been struggling. In the process of moving the colony, uh, it was exposed to air for nearly an hour, unfortunately. I just think that it never could fully recover from that experience. In an effort to save the acro, I've attempted to frag off viable pieces of the colony, only to have those pieces completely RTN by the next morning, where all I was left with was a white skeleton. During that time, I also lost my Ding Dang Acro Frag, which uh, succumbed to RTN over the course of just a couple of days. I, I've had that one for maybe five or six months, where it was slowly growing, but growing nonetheless. One acro that I never could actually identify was my blue mystery acropore that had steadily been losing tissue and now is starting to host a cyanobacteria outbreak along the, the dead skeleton of it. I'm not really sure what the cause of this is. Perhaps it's due to an alkalinity swing because the alkalinity had been fluctuating quite a bit since I upgraded to the 120 gallon tank, which is entirely my fault for not staying up on it and testing the water regularly. Perhaps the stress of the move weakened them to the point where they just couldn't recover from uh, that instability. But I don't want this to be entirely a gloom and doom type of video because I still do have a tank filled with beautiful, healthy, thriving corals that still need me to be on top of my game in order to keep them healthy and growing. I've since implemented the use of Brightwell's Purit Carbon Resin uh, Combo just in case there is some detrimental compound in the water. In the past, I've anecdotally noticed good results when I have used Purit. So the lesson learned from this for me is, I guess would be to keep up on your testing. Don't cut corners. When something needs to be done for the tank, just do it even if you don't feel like it. 
which during this period, I really didn't feel like it. Be diligent about avoiding the risk of possible household contaminants, including something as basic as using tap water instead of RODI water. And most of all, come to know the animals that are in your tank so that you can see when something is maybe a little off about them. Well, hopefully this is the end of my coral losses. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for sticking in there. I'm trying to make both informative and entertainment uh, video about our hobby, so I encourage you, if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be, you will know when new content is released. Again, my name is Ed. Thanks for watching and take care.